All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. The Hot Tag Podcast. It is Tuesday. And today we got the king of the streets, a.k.a. the fallen angel, Angel Medina from the Baldies. How's it going, sir? Appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, I appreciate you having me. But, you know, the fallen angel is Christopher Daniels. I am the kingpin angel. Oh. Well, you know. we got we to gotta get on that, that Wikipedia, man. Somebody's got to kick their ass for that, man. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? <laughs> so, Giving us false know. information. God damn. Oh, uh, poor, you know. I don't know how that Wikipedia works, man. I mean, like they tell, and the Wikipedia is like, I was born in Puerto Rico. I was like, I was never born in Puerto Rico. I was not born in 1970, you know. But it is what it is, you know. <laughs> man, we got we got to get your Wikipedia page right. Somebody got to, to get it right, man. I didn't know how to who to get a hold of, so I just let it go, you know. Yeah, we got to we got to get we got to get to get on that. We got to fix that. That's man, not I, good. Yeah. I'm amazed Wikipedia yeah. is wrong. My God, man. I mean, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to talk to you, man. Big fan. You know, I'm, I'm I'm from Philly, so I attended the ECW shows when I was a kid. I always enjoyed you, man. I actually saw you at Extreme Rising, and, 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 and you know, you were very laid back and a cool dude, so I figured I'd reach out and get you on the show. Oh, I appreciate it, man. I've always been laid back. I, You know, I don't let shit get to my head, you know what I'm saying? Some guys, you know, think they're, you know, the shit, which yeah. they aren't. You know, you can't, you can't, you got to keep it real, you know? You got to keep it, you got to keep it grounded, you know? Yeah. Yep. The only way, man. The only way. Um, let's get right into it, man. Uh, were you always a big fan of uh, wrestling? Nigga, yes, man. From, from since I was 14, I, you know, it's Clash of Champions. You know, I mean, like I said it before, man, I mean, uh, it was in junior high school, 125 in uh, Queens, New York. I mean, one of my buddies pulled out a magazine, yo, you know, he tried to school me on it. And then he told me to watch Clash of Champions on uh, TBS, you know, and I remember it was... Uh, Shit, what was that? It was Sting versus Ric Flair. You know, I was watching the show, but then that's it was dude, you gotta watch Clash of the Champions. And that was when I started watching that that the Sting versus Ric Flair and the four horse and then and I got hooked, man. You know, it's the poor man soap opera, bro. It's just you know, you get hooked. It's like nice. Latin crack, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Uh Johnny Rods. Uh you were trained by him, correct? Absolutely. The unpredictable one. You know, yeah, yeah, he's, good one. he's like my dad, you know. Uh, he trained me, he trained Vito, he trained Devon, you know, the the list goes on and on. Yeah, Taz, everyone, man. Everyone goes into yeah, that yeah. list. Uh, is, it that you... oh, yeah, is it true that you... Is it true that you quit uh, quit training the first time that you got into it? True story, yeah, I quit. First time I got into it, I was, in, I was 17 years old, walked in uh, Gleason's gym, uh, saw it on TV, and the people that were still there at the time, when I was 17, was Mondo Clean, known as Damien Demento at the time, um, <clears throat> Hugh Morris, Big Vito, uh, who else was there? Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dancers of Wolves Dudley, he was there, Adolfo. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, when you go into wrestling, you know, not, I don't care who's going to say, but when you're a kid, wrestling's fake. Oh, I want to be a wrestler, you know, just like being an actor. You know, you want to be... I want to be. I want to play wrestle, you know. Which um, I pretended to. I wanted to play wrestle, and I got my hand, my ass handed to me by the big guys. You know, they beat me up. You know, and I uh, quit. You know, Vito was one. Of, Vito was the one. You know, that beat me up and made me quit. And then um, years later, uh, I was like twenty. Like in my twenties, like twenty-one. He was on WWE, well WWF, Big Boss Man, and um, you know, and then the Vito Lino. Puts both the big boss men over, loses because he was known as Skull Von Crust at the time. And, um, and then I thought, oh, that motherfucker, you know, that's that motherfucker I had that beef with. Man, fuck that dude. And, you know, couldn't think of it, big boss man beat him. I said, he can't be beat. Fuck that. I'm going back. And um, I went back and went back to Gleason's and started training again. And to this day, me and Vito are good friends. I mean, we're the best of friends, and I rip them all the time, you know, and we joke around on Facebook saying, you know what, he can be beat, he can be beat, because that was exactly what I said when I fucking saw him on TV get squashed by the big boss, man. Oh, you know, so we joke around about that. Man, that's a, you know. that's a good one. That's a good story. Uh, absolutely. You, you briefly mentioned uh, Damien Demento, man. I mean, everybody's seen the YouTube videos that he released a couple years back where he was spazzing out on, on fans and... You know, people saying wrestling is fake. He was he was flipping out on them, and you know, saying "fuck you," this, that, and a third. Uh, back in the day, how was he, man? Is he is, is he kind of bipolar, or or does he really is is he that passionate about wrestling? 
I don't know, man. I mean, like, he never, first of all, you know, when I was there, he didn't acknowledge me. You know, there's like a kid coming, you know, like you come to high school, you know, the cool guy and the new kid comes to the school. You know, you ain't going to acknowledge him. Who are you, kid? You know, get out of here, you know. So me and him never really talked. You know, from the boys, yeah, he was, he was, he was ape shit. You know, he was one of those guys that was a little lost in the sauce. You know, I never got personally got to know him. Um, he, you know, but everybody from guys who made it in the business, like, man, this dude is fucking just missing a couple. You know, he's sniffing on that glue, you know, yeah. but, um, but I mean, I have no issues with him, man. I mean, every time I see him, he's like, you know, you get what's up, what's up, you know, um, you know, cause now, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I earned his respect cause he don't know me, you know, he, I didn't even have to earn his respect, you know, cause I don't owe him shit. But the thing is, is that now that he knows who I am, who I became, now I'm like, I guess I'm part of the fold, you know, like, Hey, you know, Hey, you know. You know, yeah. you know, it is what it is, you know. Now you get the acknowledgement. Yeah, Absolutely. I get the acknowledgement. Now, now, I can, now I can fucking go to the store and buy him a coffee and shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you go keep there go you. buy me a coffee. Yeah, man. That's, hey, that's my... Boy, come here. That's, huh? that's, that's my goal in life, to buy Damien Demento coffee at the store, man. You've accomplished no, man, he it was all. a hell of a worker. He was a hell of a worker. When I used to watch him on TV... Vince, I mean, I know the story. Vince had a hard on for him, like, oh, this is this is it. This is the motherfucker. You know, this is you know my golden ticket. Oh God! But the nigga was, you know, apparently, you know, story was he just, you know, lost in the sauce, man. He just caught an attitude, and he's like, I'm out of here, and you know, he could have been somewhere. You know, I'm not knocking him. You know, he made a decision, but you know, it was the wrong decision. Yeah, it is. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. You got two chances, man. There you go. How would you compare working in uh, in the states uh, as far as you know working in Puerto Rico and Mexico and other countries? Well, Puerto Rico, I mean, Puerto Rico, Mexico, different different uh, psychology. There's a psychology of wrestling. It's old school wrestling. Um, it's it's a um, you know like you could work a headlock, you could work a chin lock, and build build build. You know the elbow. You know it's old school mentality, like the Jerry Lawler versus uh, you know Andy Kaufman type of era. You know, the fans are just really, really passionate about wrestling. Um, and the same thing with Japan. You know, I mean, if you go to different locations, you're going to see the different psychology that grasps the fans. And I love Puerto Rico. I mean, um, I would have stayed if I didn't have the issues that, that I did down there. But, uh, you know, um, it, it, it was fun. Um, and I just, you know, since I'm Puerto Rican, you know, I was there, you know, loving my country. And uh, But I was not going to eat nobody's shit. So I just said, oh, good. Absolutely, man. Now, can you can you get into the problems that you had in Puerto Rico? Oh man, that's all over the internet, man. It's just me and Dutch Mantel, the, the you know Zip Coulter. We don't get along. Well, I can't say we don't get along. I, I just don't like the motherfucker. You know, he can suck a dick. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, I mean, I heard he got hurt when he was on Raw. Fuck him. I hope he, I hope it broke his back. I hope he can't walk. Fuck him. <laughs> you know, he's a piece of he's a racist piece of shit. You know, and I'll tell him in his face. Well, you know, I don't care like who's his cousin, huh? He looks nah, like dude, is this a, the thing about this, man, I don't start no heat with nobody, and I keep it real with everybody, and I, you know, I'm on my business, and I keep it uh, what it is, but especially when the ECW folded, like I said in other interviews, is that when the company folded, um, the thing was is that I was kind of, I mean, I was better, you know, like say you lose your job, you know, you lose your money, you know, you're going to be like, man, I don't want to fuck with nobody. So, you know, so when I got hired by Victor, Victor brought me down, Quinones. And me and Victor were cool, but I just wanted to be left alone. I, you know, it didn't affect my work ethic. It just, I just don't want, don't fuck with me. You know, I just didn't want to be, deal with the bullshit politics. So, uh, a true story. One of the boys was, uh, I was staying at the condo, in the condo in East Lavender Avenue. And, uh, we were sharing the apartment, uh, with a condo with Dutch Mantel, uh, Lobo. He was a Canadian guy, uh, Anarchy. He was a kid, one of the, like, uh, like a young boy underling coming up in the ranks. And he hooked up with this chick. So I'm watching videotapes, you know, because before DVDs, you know, the, you know, we was all watching the videotapes of my matches from the the show. And uh, he comes in with this chick, and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? whoop dee whoop This is whoever. This is Angel, you know, known as the New York and Baldy. Oh, yeah, how you doing? Hey, man, me and her are going to go in the room. Well, you know, Anarchy was an underling, and he was like, he, he slept in a walk-in closet. It was a true story, walk-in closet. It was a, big enough for like a, a, like a twin mattress. And nobody kept their clothes in that closet, you know. And it was uh, it was before the R. Kelly, you know, in the closet. You know, <laughs> he slept in the closet. And he had a little TV, bro. It was like a little tiny apartment. So he took his girl in the closet, you know. 
And right. uh, he's, you know, he's doing what he's doing, you know, getting his Mac on. So here comes Dutch Mantel, who comes in. He sees me on the sofa watching TV, and he looks at me and goes, hey, Angel, you know, have you seen Anarchy? I knew where the motherfucker was at, but I knew he was getting his swerve on. And I knew, uh, you know, since he was an underling, you know, he was going to probably get his ass. Like, Who the fuck are you to bring chicks here? You nobody, you know. So I didn't want to get the kid in trouble. So I said, nah, man, I haven't seen him, you know. Um, you know, he goes, well, when you see him, you know, tell him I'm looking for him. All right, whatever. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So then for whatever reason, either he heard something, a moan, a grunt, or he just didn't believe me. He was walking to the door. He just stopped, and he decided to walk to the back of the room. And then, um, you know, uh, he goes in the room. All I hear is, whoa, 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 you know, the grunting and, you know, not sex and stuff, but him talking, like, could have been like, hey, what the fuck, you know, whatever. And um, so he comes out of the room, and he points to me like, yo, you need to get that girl out of here now. So I'm like, you know, like, huh, nigga, am I fucking her? I'm right. like, you know what? And so I'm just like, all right, whatever, you know, you know, I just blew him off, like, oh, you know, all right. So I'm watching TV, and it comes out, oh shit, you know, I'm in trouble, whatever. So I go downstairs, you know. So Victor owned three apartments. He only lived on the like the sixth floor. We were on like the third, fourth floor, and there was like he bought another condo that he's turned into the office where he did all the video production and they had all their meetings. So I go down there to check my email. And I walk in there, you know, I check my email, you know, this is when dial up and you're taking like 40 minutes before you get your fucking email. What the fuck, you know? Um, so I'm just sitting there waiting for that dial up, you know, getting hung up on and shit. So then I'll get my email finished. And I knew when I walked in, I saw Dutch and Victor and Savio and, you know, all these motherfuckers talking in the office. And it wasn't about me. It was, they were just going over, you know, the matches or whatever they were going to do this weekend. You know, at that weekend. And so I, I get up, I'm walking around, I'm walking out, out the front door. Dude grabs me, grabs me by my arm, spins me around, but nothing too forceful. Like, yo, New York, can I talk to you? You know, like, you know, pull me. So I turn around and it was the next time I ask you where somebody's at, you fucking tell me. The next time you lie to me, you find yourself back in New York. So he starts walking away. So I grab him and hold up, nigga. <laughs> You, yo, I don't care who you talk to in Puerto Rico. I don't, you know, I don't care who you are. You do not talk to me like I'm a kid. And I was like 28 at the time. I'm 28 years old. I don't need you to fucking bark orders at me like I'm your fucking kid. That dude's eyes open up like, and you know the look. How dare you? How dare you? You know who I am? I'm Dutch man. Tell nigga, you ain't nobody. <laughs> because you never went past Mid South Wrestling, you never went past Tennessee. So don't tell me you're somebody. You're Mid Carter WWE F whatever at the time. So don't pretend you're somebody because you're still a nobody. So you know, but I respect him. He's been somewhere. I gave him his props. So he looked at me and he walked away. And then all of a sudden, shit started happening. Like you know, the promises. You know, like hey, you know, like when I talked to Victor, he was like, hey, you know, Angel, um. You know, uh, you know, like he was like, I said, hey, you know, you don't need a place to stay, Angel. You can stay at this apartment. Okay, no problem. You Don't worry about the ride to the shows. We got you to the ride to the show. So this was all in my deal when I first got there. All of a sudden, Dutch comes out of nowhere. Uh, Angel, yeah? Uh, uh, you, uh, you need to get to uh, find yourself another place to stay. What do you mean I got another place to stay? Uh, Victor said I could stay here. Well, it's just that you only could stay here for a short time because I was there for like three months at the time in that apartment. And it was just for you to not stay, for you to settle in. So now it's time for you to get your own apartment. Oh, okay. All right. Whatever. Then all of a sudden, a week later, hey, Angel, what? Uh, well, you need to find another ride because, uh, you know, uh, either rent a car or something because uh, we need that space for the next guy coming in. What? Uh oh. All right, all good. No, no worries, man. No worries. So then um, I'm like, you know what? Fuck him. Fuck this. So I say, hey, man, I'm taking a vacation. I'm going back to the states. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, will you be back? Well, yeah, I'll be back on the 16th because it was like Christmas time. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be back. Deuces, nigga. <laughs> you see that plane dust just fly off. So then I left, and they were mad. I left. Savio was mad. Everybody was mad. But you know what? I went up to them and said, look, man. The, the, Dutch is doing this whoop de whoop de whoop and all this bullshit. They were like, well, um, you know, Savio, you know, Victor is, um, 
I don't know, you know, Dutch is his Dutch is prog, you know, whatever. It was Dutch is, you know, it's his rule, it's his way, he's the booker. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was the man. You know, excuse me. I'm out. I'm out, nigga. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out of here. So then, uh, so then when I went back to the States, he, and he was mad. And then my opportunity came. Ring. It's homicide. Yo, son, I got a deal for you, kid. I got a deal. What's going on? I want you to be part of LAX. Yeah? What's going on? You know, I want you to come back with me, be a tag team with me. You know, but, yo, I heard you got he would Dutch. He's in the office here. You need to get Devon on your side. Which Devon was on my side. You need to tell Devon. So, and talk to Terry Taylor. So I talked to Terry Taylor. Terry Taylor liked me. Devon's like, don't worry, I got you back. I'll talk to him. So then uh, a couple weeks later, it was like, yo, I was like, yo, son, uh, it's between you and Hernandez, but I know for sure you're going to get it. You know, guaranteed. That nigga Dutch heard my name. That nigga's like, oh, no. Yeah, but it's, no. The angel's a good worker. No. But, you know, he's, he's got the right skin tone. Fuck him. You know? And then, um, but he speaks Spanish. I don't care. And then they hired Hernandez, which I have nothing against Hernandez. We power to him. But that's what occurred. So then after that, I'm like, oh, he wants to play that way. Yo, you tell that nigga when the next time I see him, I don't care if it's Tennessee, the Hall of Fame, or is that at his own funeral, I'm going to punch him in his fucking mouth and stomp a mud hole in his ass. <laughs> so so that was, right. that's why me and him don't like each other. And then, you know, if he knows if he sees me, he's going to shit a brick because he knows I'm not hiding it on the Internet. I'm not hiding it on radio talk shows. So he's hearing this, and he's listening in right there in Tennessee in his rocking chair, drinking his fucking moonshine, going, <laughs> spitting it out. Oh, shit, he's, he's coming to get me, son. This nigga's coming to get me. Oh, Fuck man. him. Oh, man. You so know. Dutch Mentor was cock-blocking. Yeah, man, he's a racist piece of shit. How can you go to Puerto Rico and live off the, live off the people, you know, living off us but treating us like shit? And right. then when I stand up to speak up my mind because you treating me wrong, you know, like the thing is, that how, how, how the fuck do I got heat? Because you came up to me and disrespected me and I, and I spoke up for myself. Now, oh, shit, I got heat because you're saying I got an attitude problem? No, nigga, because you came in, came in sideways. And when I put you in check, you were like, you know, if we were back in 1849, you'd be hanging from a tree with a couple <laughs> of lashes, son. That's how he looked at me, because that look was like, how dare you, boy, talk to me. Out the house, back to the field, you go. <laughs> you yeah. know? Fuck him, dude. Oh, damn, man. Guess I'm telling you, to, you know, I'm putting it right here on your show. The day that nigga dies and you hear, hey, did you hear? Kingpin went down to fucking Tennessee, opened the coffin, and started pissing on that nigga. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah, that's going to be a shoot. Oh, You're gonna man. see me like I'll be handcuffed on the front page of the Tennessee Inquirer. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> you I'll know? believe it. I'll believe it now. <laughs> oh my yeah, believe God. it, man. I will piss on that nigga's grave, bro. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Man. All because of cock blocking, man. Don't do that. No, of course, no, yo, you don't talk to me that way, man. You know, I'm from the hood, man. I mean, and I'm not talking about gang banging and shit, but you don't talk, you know what I'm saying, man. You don't come up to some dude sideways, you don't know him and start barking orders like, you know, you're my dad. Right. You're stupid. You know, and that's the only thing about wrestling, man, is some of these guys, like, you know, regardless who it is, white, black, Chinese, yes, sir, boss, oh, yo, whatever you want, you know, all the stories like, hey, Pat Patterson, I'll suck your dick if you give me the income to the title shot. You know, yeah, no, I ain't sucking nobody's dick. I'll, I'll stay mid card. I'll put over anybody. <laughs> nah, but these niggas spreading those ass cheeks, you know, putting a little bit of butter in there and just letting the niggas slide in. No, no, sorry. Oh, man. Sorry. You know. Well, I, I can't argue that, man. I can't. I'm, I'm with you 100% on that, man. I can't argue that. Now, yeah. speaking of Puerto Rico, um, was Carlos Colon still around? I mean, no, I know he's still alive. He's still alive. <laughs> no, I know he's still alive, but I mean, was he still around the office and was he still booking and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, he was—he's still booking. He's still performing. He's still—I mean, not performing. He still has a show. The you know, where, you know, where wrestling council still going strong. I mean, I never worked for him. I mean, I you know, it's just because I heard not bad things. It's just that, you know, I didn't want to deal with not getting paid. And he was infamous for like, hey kid, um. I can't pay you today, you know, but I'll pay you next week. I said, nigga, I already got that from Wimpy. I'd be glad to pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> nigga, no, that ain't working in my world. And I said, nah, so I didn't, I mean, I didn't turn them down. They didn't ask for me. It's just, and I knew, 
Because, um, uh, you know, the reason why I know that is because, um, I mean, everybody told me, but the more infamous was when me and Mustafa bumped into each other in the gas station in Puerto Rico. Hey, what's going on, brother? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and he goes, you know, uh, hey, how's Victor treating you? Victor treating me good. Hey, how's going on with Carlos? Uh, you know, you know. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't get paid the day we're supposed to get paid and move the whoop. So I said, oh, so it's not even good for me to even attempt to go, you know, over there, right? He goes, oh, well, you having problems? I said, no, nah, no, nah, but if I wanted to switch over, it's, you know, I don't think it's a good idea. He goes, nah, man, I think you got it made here. It's better for you here. Little did I know, um, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I would have worked for him. But at that point, I was just like, man, nigga, don't fuck with my money, you know, because I already got the ECW not getting paid mentality at the time so I just didn't want to deal with the bullshit I wanted my money I was like that commercial bro like that uh, law, that law firm you know I need my money now yeah you know mm, that, yeah. you know screaming out the window that's what it was me I just need that shit now not today not tomorrow now yeah. <laughs> absolutely man that's 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 very understandable you don't want to put your body at risk yeah. for a for a hot dog and a diet coke you know yeah yeah I've done that already man you know yeah absolutely well, speaking of not getting paid, you were uh, you were working for a uh, hardcore road trip, right? Yeah. Yeah, what happened with that? I didn't get paid, nigga. What the hell do you think will happen? <laughs> yeah, I well. Didn't get paid. <laughs> Damn, Shaheen, what do you think happened? Well, what the fuck do you want? <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get into it, you know? But uh, I, I know a lot of wrestlers were pissed off, man. I mean, was the guy legitimately... Did he have a heart attack? I mean, that was the rumor. The guy had a heart attack. No, nigga, that didn't. Hospital yeah, nigga and... had a heart attack when he knew he wasn't going to pay us. Holy yeah, shit, yeah. I don't got enough money. Oh, yeah. you know. Nah, yeah. I mean, it is what it is, man. Um, I mean, I should actually. The first show, everything went off gravy, man. He paid me. Everything went fine. whoop de whoop you know, I had the title, whoop de whoop whoop de whoop you know, I mean, everything was good. And then I guess, you know, he did, you know, he did that, you know, you know, put that, pulled the wool over our eyes because, you know, he gave us the money. Hey, everything went fine. And then, you know, the next show, you know, everything's fine. You know, he picked me up at the airport. I had my hotel. I was driving, driving around. And then, you know, um, I, uh, you know, I saw him a couple of times, you know, and then little by little, you know. One of the boys came up to me and said, yo, dude, this dude just bounced, you know, just dead, man. He didn't pay the boys. Ah, you fucking with me. Really? Nah, you just fucking with me. You know, nah, seriously, dude. He just laughed. He laughed. He said he had a heart attack, went to the hospital. And um, I'm like, nah. You know, I was really not, like, believing that. I thought they were ripping me until we, you know, that he, he just dead, man. He just bounced. Huh. Niggas went to his house, you know, kicked in his front door and everything. Yeah, I bet, man. I you mean. Know? Go to fucking Canada for a yeah. show and you're not getting paid. I mean, it's not right. Yeah, I was pissed, bro. I was heated, bro. Yeah. I was like that scene in the Shawshank Redemption when he came out of the sewer and he looked up to the sky. <laughs> the camera pan back. <laughs> why, nigga, why? <laughs> you know. Oh, man. Boxman, you got a question? Yeah. Oh, God, that's the first Shawshank, Red Shawshank Redemption reference on the show. Uh, all right. Um, there you go. How did you uh, end up in ECW? How'd you end up working there? That was Devon. Um, it was just, okay. uh, I mean, it's who you know in this business. It doesn't matter how talented you are. Talented does help, but it's always about who you know. And, and uh, you know, to this day, you know, no matter how many times I do the interviews, they always ask how I got in, and it's always courtesy of Devon. You know, Devon was, you know, still is a close friend of mine. He knows I just don't really talk on the phone a lot. I don't want to bother him all the time. But, mm -hmm. you know, he was the one that was going to come in at ECW. He was going to get me in TNA with Homicide's help. And, um, and we just tons of shit, you know. Um, you know, he was, uh, how the story is that, you know, one of the guys at the Gleason gym was going down to the shows in Philly. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he was like, yeah, I'm getting a ref job, you know, Devon, you know, told me to come down with you. So one day he was like, it was like a Thursday or Wednesday or some shit. And I was like, yeah, what's going on? How's Philly? He goes, oh, everything's good, but I won't be able to go this Saturday. What's going on? My car is not really, it's all, you know, it's in the shop, so I won't be able to go to Philly. Hey, man, if you want me to go, you know, I mean, I'll drive you. You know, if it's cool with Devon, just, you know, he goes, yeah, I like Devon. And then Devon told me to come down and say, come down, bring your stuff. And then. You know, I brought my stuff, and they were having a workout in the ring, and, you know, it was Tracy Smothers, Nova, you know, they were doing all this, like, you know, before DDP yoga stretch and, you know, do some, you know, spots and shit. And uh, I, I wrestled my match with uh, Guido, you know, a little back and forth, you know, like even a 10-minute, not even 10 minutes, you know, just a quick, like, three or four-minute thing. 
And then um, as soon as I was done working out, I come to the back and um, pause like at a table with Van Dam and uh, Sabu. I, they were talking over something, you know, like a match or something. And he looks up and he goes, hey, kid, come here. And I go, yeah. He goes, hey, you did great out there. I said, okay. He goes, stick around. I go, huh? Just stick around, four. Just stick around. Oh, okay. And then I go to Devo Neal and uh, this is what happened. Paul said, stick around. What does that mean? Because if Paul tells you to stick around, just stick around. Yeah, but I don't understand what he says. Stick around. Angel, just stick around. Don't worry about it. And that's how it happened. You know, I just kept going to the shows and DeVito was going to the shows. Like, I think I was there before DeVito like a week, a week and a half because I remember seeing him in Boston. That's the first time I think I remember seeing DeVito up there when we went to uh, um, the, the building where the mass transit situation happened. Mm -hmm. um, the bowling alley, whatever it was, right. horse track or whatever. And, uh, you know, it was me and DeVito. DeVito was with DJ, just incredible. And then we just, me and him just kept going. And then we got the spot on the ring crew and then uh, just and went straight from there, you know. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, kinda, I got fired at my job, so I had to get a job working at ring crew. That's how I got the job on ring crew, technically, because I got fired and then uh, Devon got me a job on ring crew. He was like, hey, yeah. get your wrestling, but I'll get your ring crew. Got to you know. get in how you can, man. It's a start, man. You got to yeah, start but, at the bottom sometimes. Yeah, I was like, I was like Dave Chappelle at work, man. They were like, "Hey, Medina, take take these boxes. Fuck your couch, nigga. Fuck your couch. <laughs> I'm 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 going to ECW. You're fired. Fuck you. Fuck your couch, nigga. Fuck it." <laughs> oh man, I got a question about the Baldies, man. Now this this was a rumor from from a couple years ago that I heard. What was the Baldies gimmick? based on a real New York skinhead gang, which was it was a weird rumor to me because you're of Puerto Rican descent, so it's like, why the fuck? It, you yeah, know. the Fort of Maldives was a real legit, legitimate gang in New York, but I heard there were some Hispanics in there. But um, if you Google that, yeah, there were a group called the Fort of Maldives. Fort of Maldives. Yeah. And then they made the movie The Wanderers. Hey, man, you don't mess with the Baldies, man. The reason they shave their head is to, to when they need in the fight, the hair don't get in their eyes. I fucking Classic love that movie. Line. I love that movie. I hate to say it. <laughs> yeah. There you go, man. So, now, right. also, another guy, uh, New Jack, man. You worked a lot with New Jack and ECW, hands down. I mean, I thought New Jack, you know, you guys meshed well in the ring. It was it was some really good hardcore matches, man. Some of, some of the best stuff that, that came out of New Jack towards the uh, end of ECW. How was he backstage? Was he as, as, as he crazy cool, as it man. seems? No, I mean, I stayed away from him. I mean, I was always like, you know, like, oh, what's up, man? Hey, everything cool? Yeah, everything good. Blah, blah, blah. All right, man, I'll holler at you later. Because, you know, I mean, huh? I mean, he was, um, yeah, I mean, I've seen him, you know, pop off on shit, you know, like, oh, shit, this dude, like slapping the shit out of Big Grimes and beating up some white kid in, uh, in uh, North Carolina, you know, because he goes, hey, boy, you know, that was classic. Uh, some kid was doing a tryout and, um, you know, boom, boom, he's wrestling and then he cuts a promo on New Jack. Like, what are you looking at, boy? Yeah, you boy, I'm talking to you, and you know, it looks to the left, look like you know, you talk, you know, like nigga. What's up? You know, so you heard that music, <laughs> and then I was like, he's the back. The kid goes, and I was sitting next to the kid. It was funny because he, he just didn't say Jack didn't do anything. Like you could just see him, like, huh, what? Okay, all right, all right. So then, um, I went to the back, and I'm sitting next to this kid, and I was like, here comes. You know, his music is, you know, what are you said, gangster, you know, coming in there. Well, oh, what the? Punches the kid, and, you know, he falls back, falls into this coat rack, and then Jack is just pounding on him. And the reason he was pounding on him is because, you know, calling the boy and stuff like that. And, of course, you know, like, well, you know, I'm part of the team, so I got to put a stomping on this kid, too. Stomp, stomp. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and, uh, you know, and that, you know, I've seen him do that. And, you know, beating up on Vic Grimes and wanted to kill him. You know, that's why he tried to kill him at the, you know, uh, oh, what's the fucking... Uh, it was guilty as charged. Guilty, yeah, off that scaffold. Didn't, no, when didn't, he tried to really kill him at the XPW. Oh, yeah. Didn't it all stem for, from... For from uh, yeah, it all yeah. stemmed from guilty as charged, right? Yes. Uh. Yeah. Well, the thing was, is it's funny because, you know, Vic Grimes, is, I love Vic Grimes, don't get me wrong, I mean, but he was always fun to make fun of, you know, we was always ripping him. But... 
the story was originally I was supposed to go up the scaffold. It was going to be me and New Jack. But if you look at the scaffold, it didn't have, it was one of those sort of scaffolds that had, a, it was for chairs, and it didn't have a floor. It was just rails. So I said, look, um, I'm not doing it, man. I mean, you, you get a you get like a big piece of wood to put on top of it. I'll stand on it, and that's fine. I'll go through the table. That's fine. It's just that it's, there's no stability up there. And, and, oh, we don't have time to get some. I ain't doing it. So he comes back, I'll do it. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> like, yeah. you sure? You, you know, uh, all right, nigga, you want to do it. You, you can do it, Jack. He's going to do it. Just right like back. So then when they go up there, that's what happened. Apparently, he, he, caught, he chickened out. I don't know because I wasn't up there. Jack said he chickened out, and that's why Jack had to pull him. And then he landed on him. Well, the, supposedly, we were supposed to all get laid out. Everybody's supposed to get laid out. So when, if you look at the video, everybody's laid out. But, but uh, the Grimes, he's standing out, p- punching his head. Yeah, and then and then he goes in the back, so I was talking shit. Nothing like, hey, fuck Jack or whatever. But he was like... Yeah, I laid out Jack, you know, you see now, oh my God, you know, just started talking, chipping his teeth. So what happens, you know, you know, the boys, you know, like, what the fuck, you know, and they told Jack, and Jack said, all right, whatever. So then we're in Buffalo, New York, and we're in the locker room at the uh, Burst Lickinger Center, and as I remember to this day, we're sitting there, doo doo do, 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 I'm sitting there, and uh, Vic is sitting behind me, but behind the locker. So it was like, you know, like a, uh, you know, like in the locker room in a sports thing. You know, it was just a bench, and behind him, behind me, was Vic between the locker. All of a sudden, I see Jack walk in, do-do-do-do-do, walks past me, and I hear, slap, you know, what did the five fingers say to the face? <laughs> just slap. He just slapped it, and I could feel the, the locker just hit, hit, you know, like push me forward, and I'm like, what the? And I hear, yo, you gonna talk shit? You know, Vic, you gonna talk shit? And you, yo, man, why you have to do that, man? Whoa, whoa. I'm laughing because I was like, yo, man, what the hell is wrong with you? What do you got to do that for? So then I'm like, holy shit. So then um, then uh, he goes outside and Paul's like, you know, calming him down. Fuck him, man. That motherfucker landed on me, whoop de whoop and, and then Jack said, all right, I'm going to get him, man. So he put, like, these ball pee, these uh, these cocaine mallets inside a guitar. Um, and it's on video. Um, he puts his cocaine man and he wraps electrical tape, uh, no, uh, like duct tape around it. And he just wraps it, wraps it, wraps it, wraps it. And he just puts these, you know, all these you know, these cocaine mallets in there. So he was like, yeah, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. So then uh, Paul's like, no, you can't do that. Fuck that, I'm doing it. So then, uh, you know, when Jack was doing the tape, uh, Paul goes, Angel, you're taking the, you know, the guitar shot. Vic, as soon as Jack hits the ring, you powder, you take off. Okay, so then I said, "Yo, Jack, Vic uh, is gonna take off when you hit the ring." Nah, fuck that shit. So I said, "Nah, man, you know, um, apparently I'm gonna get the ch- you know guitar shot in the head." Man, fuck that. He needs to stay in the ring. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. Oh, that's fine, but um, yeah, I'm gonna talk to Paul about that. Yeah, that's good, but do me a favor. Um, can you take those cocaine mallets out of the damn uh, guitar before you hit me with that motherfucker? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got you, I got you. And he went to bitch at Paul about it. And then he did take it out, but since he put so much tape on it, it reinforced the fucking guitar. So if you watch the video and he hits him with the guitar, the car don't break, up, the, the guitar don't break. I mean, I didn't get hurt, hurt, but it, when it, when you got hit, uh, it's, just, it's just like, oh, sh-, you know, it was still rattled me. But um, he, he always took care of me, though. Absolutely. Also, you worked some uh, matches with uh, Tommy Dreamer and Raven. What was what was Raven like? Cause uh, I, I met him a few times, and I'm you know I'm not afraid to say he's, he's, he was a dick, you know. So I just I want to know how he was backstage. Man, I mean, um, Scott, he's cool, man. He's not really a talker, man. I mean, you know, there's certain cliques and there's certain people that you're cool with. I mean, we talk, but it was hey, Angel, what's going on? Hey, what's up, man, Scotty? What's going on? Yeah, and uh, just chilling, makes a couple jokes, and that's it. And, you know, but it was we just we were cool, but we were like, oh, yo, come. I mean, there were certain things when I like showed up at his room for a reason for something, but um, you know, um, but right, but nothing out of them. You know, like we never hung out. I mean, he was not the type of dude I like to hang out. You know, and nothing yeah. negative. It's, we just didn't click. We didn't mesh. You know, there were right. certain people I hung out with. You know, no chemistry. No chemistry. Now, were you at the? I know, I know you were at one of the Extreme Risings. Um, was that the same show that Raven worked, where he he refused to wrestle and pretty much just cut a promo saying that that all the ECW fans are pretty much over with and they have no lives and they're trying to reunite all these you know old wrestlers and it's not working? Were you at the same show? Yeah, that was the one when he brought in Cripple H. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Cripple H. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that man yeah. that. Dad got a lot of heat. I, I, if they capitalized on that and 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 
kept that thing going, man, I, th- I think they could have had something going with him. But I guess, I don't know, I guess I mean, it didn't really work out. No, but it's not that it didn't work out, man. People, ju- I'm sorry to say, man, but they drew for that money, man. You know, I mean, they had good things going, Extreme Rise and Hardcore Road Trip. You know, all these companies that had a follow-up, meaning, like, people were hungry for the product. You know, Shane was right. You know, these people want the product. But these motherfuckers are just, like, being these fucking Shylocks and just going, like, you know, just screwing the fans over and then taking the money and running, which is bullshit. Yeah. I mean, the first show, man, that was that was embarrassing. I was there, and, you know, half the wrestlers were fucking falling asleep in the ring, you know. And honestly, one of the only matches that, that was good was, was your match with New Jack when uh when Blackout came out. That was that was one of the only matches you that sure? was good. You sure? You sure? You yeah. sure? Because then the next, the, next, the next show, you have, uh, you know, Raven, and go, yo, man, your match was the best, bro. That fucking angel <laughs> match was some shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nah, man, we... I don't do drugs, man. I mean, I'm not. I'm not CM Punk, you know. I'm. I mean, I drink once in a while. Right. I try to keep myself straight, but you know, I mean, I love the boys to death. There's certain guys I love, you know. But I mean, they have issues, you know, and they have the demons, you know. And um, I mean, the only thing like my vice was women, you know. I love that pussy, but um, yeah. So if like anything would have happened to me. Oh yeah, man. But you know, like niggas had no drug overdose and you know, you know, OD and shit. Me, they would have been like, "Yo, did you hear the kingpin was found in the closet hanging like J. David Carradine?" You know, <laughs> from like self asphyxiation with some chick with these two Brazilian belly dancers. Um, pussy suicide. But, um, yeah, pussy suicide, bro. But but see, I, that's the thing, man. I was always to myself, you know. I mean, I was kind of like, you know, like. Like, you know, like every time I hooked up with a female, you know, like, yo, where's Angel, man? I don't know, man. He was talking to this chick a minute ago. Now I'm saying he's gone. You know, I was never like, yo, I'm about to leave. I got this piece of... Yeah, I was always like low key, you know. I was like the shadow. Like, you remember that movie, The Shadow? What well, lurks in the heart of man, the shadow goes. I was just like, oh. <laughs> this fog just like passes between your legs. Like, was that Angel? Yes, it's the fog. <laughs> the shadow. Oh, man. Yeah. The, sh- the shadow of Angel. There you go, man. Yeah, that's right, bro. I don't share my pussy, bro. There, as, as you, sh- you shouldn't, man. You shouldn't. No, nah, but you know, you know, some of these dudes will get on the table with the fucking shit like in the King Arthur, you know, with the horn. <laughs> you know, hey, 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 I'm about to go to room 518 with my piece of ass. Come <laughs> hither, come my subjects and come to my room. And then when you knock on the door, it's like, you know, you think fucking, um, uh, you know what's that? You know what's that motherfucker name with the fucking lollipops? It's always like lemons. What's his name? Uh, Adam Rose. Uh, Adam, Adam Rose. You Adam know, Rose. and he's like that's how that's how Ravens was like. That's how you know, like you're not gonna do it. And also the door opens. You see, oh, everybody in there, oh, just like you know, Adam Rose. You know, jumping up and down, butt naked, lollipops everywhere, cocaine products <laughs> everywhere. And I'm like, hey, um, I'll holler you niggas later. You know, me. Yeah. I was like. You know, my room was like, uh, I come out with the smoking jacket with the Barry White, you know, with the, <laughs> with the champagne, you know, with the chocolates, you know, and then niggas, oh, this nigga's romance. And nah, nigga, you know, I just got class, you know, that's how I, I cultivate the pussy. I marinate the pussy. You know, you go, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a buddy, you know, you, you, you caress it before you smash it. <laughs> you know, these niggas want to fucking destroy it. <laughs> There you go, man. You, know? you, heard, you heard it first. Angel likes to marinate the pussy before you marinate smash it. Don't you gotta we all. marinate the pussy. Don't we you all. gotta marinate the pussy before you beat it up. You know. How, how many hours? How out. many hours would you marinate the pussy before you smash it? Oh man, maybe a couple like two hours. It's just whining and dining, man. You whining and dining, and you licking them up, and you you tell them how beautiful they are, you know, and you know, and bullshit them and this shit, and all of a sudden, you know, you like that, like that old R and B song. Before you turn off the lights. You remember that song? Yeah, I know what song you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go, man. Not only did you get wrestling questions, you also got some uh, love tips from Angel. There you go. That's right, man. Love potion number nine. It was love potion 69. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good shit, man. Good shit. Also, um, Extreme Rising, man. I know they canceled a bunch of shows, and did, I still didn't get my fucking money back from them. So I just want to know, Steve O'Neill, when the, the, the dealing that you had with him, was he... Did he pay you guys, or was did he just dick over the fans? No, I mean I got paid. I mean it was the one shot deal, and I got paid. But gee, but the funny thing is that they paid me. That's no problem. And then little by little, you know, I told you, know, I was telling him, I said, like, "Yo, I'm telling you, nigga, you know, you got paid eight hundred this time." And he told me like, "Yo, man, he, he, um, 
he he yeah, he paid me eight hundred this time. Also on the next show he said he gave me like seven fifty. Oh, oh wait, 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 what? You give me yeah, nigga, I'm telling you. Don't sleep on that nigga. That nigga's gonna give you this like this this uh this uh, sob story of like, oh you know, brother. You know, the thing about promoters is this. I always used to always hear this line. This is the classic line from a promoter, hey kid. I'm unable to pay you the money that I promised you because the gate was the gate was low. <laughs> so, you know, here's twenty dollars. You know. But nigga, do you ever see me come up to you, promoter, when I say, Yo, I, you said you was expecting two fifty. I see like eight hundred niggas in this fucking department, yo, for you know, you need to bump up my pay. Do you ever you know, you don't see nobody doing that. But you right. get the promoter say, Hey, you know, uh, they're making nothing. you know, see, so don't give me that see, I'd be like, No, don't give me that shit, dude. Give me my money. You see know? that's that's what I don't strong, understand. Huh? That's what I don't yeah. understand because the first the first house they they drew at least fifteen hundred to two thousand people. I mean, I remember the old ECW show was a good crowd was about two thousand twenty five hundred people. So it was a good crowd. They just they kind of fucked it up and and didn't capitalize on it and it was a missed opportunity. Not nigga, they were just being Jews, man. I hate saying that word, but you know they they, <laughs> they got the money from them stream rising and they went home. They laid all that money out on the bed and they rolled around in it naked getting all sticky icky with that shit and then they wanted to keep it they wanted to partake and give it to the boys you know and that's the problem you know Man. you know and that's the thing you know we they regardless who it is you know from raven to to shane douglas to cm punk i don't give a fuck who it is i mean it's from the you know from the Remember, from the poor house to the penthouse, man, it's, you know, from the beginning of the show to the end of the show, those niggas are the ones that put seats. Because I don't give a fuck what you say. It, not everybody there is going to come and see Raven. Not everybody there is going to come see New Jack. Not everybody there is going to come see Angel. Every individual is there for somebody, you know, like, so they are putting asses in seats. You know, I never heard anybody go, you know, like a whole arena at WWE going, hey, uh, you, are you all here just to see The Rock? Are you all here to see, uh, you know, Stone Cold? No, you know, I mean, no. Everybody right. had fans that had their own fans, and that's what who puts the seats in there. So I had my fans. I mean, maybe one or two, but, nigga, that's the one or two that you didn't have. So, um, you know. Nah, it's, it's, it's more than that. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, one more question before we let you go, man. Do you still watch wrestling? Yeah, nigga, I told you I got the WWE Network, and the shit ain't free. Yeah, well, <laughs> since it's not free, I, I don't know. Up, man. Like, geez, we gotta... This man should get him. He's on the network. He needs to, you need to contact somebody, man. I'm telling you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like, I didn't do that already. All right. Forget it then. <laughs> Classic. Hey, uh, you know, I called John Lennon and I, I remember I called him. Hey, uh, John, this is Angel. Who? Angel. <laughs> from the Valdis. Who? From ECW. Oh. Never heard of you. What? Nigga, please. You know, again, I am not Triple H. I'm not Stone Cold. But, nigga, you know who I am if you got me on the WWE Network. You know who the person is. So don't right. fucking bullshit me and stroke me. Because I know everybody. I mean, I know every wrestler. I know, I mean, I don't know every wrestler, but, nigga, I know enough. So don't tell me, you know, if I watch TNA, I know mostly all the whole roster. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, I even know the fucking Spud nigger. So don't tell me <laughs> that, you know, if I'm in the office... And I go and I get a phone call. Hey, this is so you know Spud from TNA, you know the guy who managed Dixie Car, you know assistant assistant Dixie Carter. Yeah, I'm gonna remember who the fuck you are. What's going on? What do you need? You know, but don't go who, <laughs> what, huh? Yeah. yeah, all right, because you hear you hear but you're know, bass in the voice and you hear yo, what's up, son? Yo, this is Angel. Oh, well, who let this nigger fucking patch through my phone? Damn it. Uh Probably Kevin Dunn. He you hates know. ECW, so. Well, oh, but, you know, it is what it is. So. Now, Boxman, you, know, you, you, yeah, I mean, you got to know. Hmm? Boxman, you had a couple more questions. Yeah, um, you were talking about New Jack earlier, and y'all had a pretty violent uh, feud. W w besides the scaffold, was there anything he, he like he, he would ask you to do that, that was just, you know, too crazy for you? Nah, man, I was down, man. Jack was Jack always took care of me. Was, I mean, don't want to get me wrong, man. Niggas, the shit that they did, oh, damn. You know, come on, man. I mean, anything he did, I was like, oh, shit. When you see a black dude on, you know, 30, 40 feet over your head about to dive on you, no matter how the fuck you're going to put it, you're going to look up, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> hold on, mutual, you know, my insurance is paid. 
you know, and when he lands on you, you start moving your legs. Okay, my legs are working. I'm still, I'm still going, you know. So, but he never hurt me, man. He was a world class uh, professional. He was a good guy. I would say he was. He still is. Yeah. And um, no, we, I was never worried, man. But there were certain things like, like the scaffold thing. Yo, know, man, I am not doing it unless a piece of wood is there. I'll do it. <laughs> Dick Grimes is all yours. Yeah. You know. So somebody else is willing. Teacher, to take two money. minutes of fame. <laughs> yeah, get it. and he got well. I guess he did. Probably not the way he wanted to yeah. though. So. Yeah, last time. So the funny thing is, I spoke to him like like maybe a year ago, a year and a half ago. Hey, Dick, what's going on? How's it going? Everything good? And um, you know, he he got on uh, like a, this uh gastric bypass. You know, he you know to to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So he lost weight, and he just he, he's in a motorcycle gang. Nothing major, just like a charitable motorcycle gang. Right. And he goes, yeah, now. You know, I go to church, and, you know, I found God. And, you know, I'm always joking. I said, nigga, I'll find God, too, after Jack tried to kill me at the fucking XPW show when he threw you off the balcony after he tased your ass. I'll find Jesus, too, when you land. And you go, I'm still alive. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jesus. 25, 25 you know. foot don't do that to you, man. Oh, yeah. No, I think that's. I think that now I think it was more than 25 feet, man. I mean, from the, the XPW, the one where he did the, the, the scaffold. Yeah. You know, the one where he went through like 18 tables and bounced off the ropes. Right. He almost yeah. fell outside the ring. Yeah. Yeah. He saw God. He was like, praise the Jehovah. <laughs> that saw... he, was, he was speaking tongues when he landed with <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank oh, God. <laughs> he was like, brother love, I love you. <laughs> he was doing all those, he was doing all those lines, bro. <laughs> Fuck that! I'll be praying Jesus, you know. Oh, I'll be closing every line. Oh, brother, justify! <laughs> nice. <God damn. laughs> before yeah. we let you, before we let you go, Angel, I got I got one suggestion, man. You know how Jr. and and Mick Fuller are doing like a comedy thing and they're touring. I think, man, you should you should do that, man. <laughs> yeah. You should definitely. I think you can make a lot of fucking money off of that. Who? Uh, J J J. You mean Tim Ross? Yeah, Jim Ross is doing like a not a comedy thing, but he's going around telling wrestling stories, and Mick Foley's doing something similar. But he's got a he kind of you know incorporates comedy into it. A little one man show type of thing, kind of like what Mike Tyson's doing. Oh, I just can't, I just can't see Jim Ross doing comedy. That's the <laughs> that's like watching paint dry. I mean, I'm not making fun. Of a great commentator. I just don't see. Oh yeah. yeah. See, yeah I don't you know, actually... see humor. Yeah, I actually, be, it might not even be a comedy thing. I think he just goes around tell, telling, you know, wrestling stories from, from the Mid South and, you know, NWA and stuff like that. But I mean, I got some stories, man. I got tons of stories. I mean, I mean, I crack up. I mean, I'm always telling jokes and shit. It's just the thing about wrestling is just, you know, you know, it's just all funny, man. I, I have stories that people are like, nah, that didn't really happen, nigga. It happened. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, it did happen, you know. So, yeah. it, nothing surprises me you know. now. Maybe I should do that, man. Do the, the Kingpin World Tour, you know? Yeah, man, do it. So, make, make it happen, man. Start off in Philly, man. You know, I'll, I'll definitely buy a ticket. Let's make this happen. <laughs> you be the only one. I'll be the big old spotlight <laughs> in front of me. And, like, and you hear that like that. They're like, hey, and uh, the punchline in your hair. Oh, man. <laughs> you be hearing that there. And I look through the lights because I can't see anything. And I'm like, I see that one person. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, hey, oh. hey, 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 it's just me. Who the fuck is that? God damn. Bro. <laughs> you I, know. I, think, I think after we interview you, we're probably going to have to just end the show, man. I don't know how to continue after this. <laughs> yeah, we're going to just <laughs> gone for the night. Let's see follow that. Oh, no, I mean, I appreciate you guys having me on the show, man. I mean, I'm not that hard to find, man. I appreciate every time a fan and people put me on shows because I'm always still remembered, you know, and I appreciate that. So I always give back to everybody who has me on the shows, you know. It's just that I'm just forgetful, meaning I don't forget you. It's just that, you know, you go, I got guys going, hey, man, uh, you mind doing my show? Sure, man. I do your show. Uh, I got a spot April fifteenth. Think I ain't gonna remember that. That's not gonna be on the calendar. Like, hey, it was a big asterisk star. Like, I got this big show, radio show. You gotta keep hitting me up. Like, hey, remember? Don't forget, we got this show coming up. Oh yeah, yeah, brother, just keep on me. I mean, I will do the show. It's just that I'll be watching. You know, I'm watching. You know, uh, Gotham or watching my uh, Sleepy Hollows and shit. And uh, you know, gotta watch Empire. Nigga, Empire's the shit. And um. You know, I get stuck in my shows and playing video games, and now all of a sudden, like, oh, shit, I was supposed to do a show today, so you got to be on me like this, dude. Hey, any questions you, we cannot ask? Oh, I don't care. You know, or do you want to ask? I don't care. 
Fuck it. Uh, man, <laughs> you can get anything. Man, you, you know, you got you to gotta play safe, man. You'd be surprised a lot of wrestlers. Fuck you know. that shit. What, what's going to happen to me? <laughs> What's going to happen well, no, to me? I'm saying, you know, I'm saying on our part to get, you know, because a lot of wrestlers, you know. Oh, what? Like right now, up. fuck you, Dutch. Fuck you, Dutch. And then two <laughs> weeks later, hey, did you hear? They found a the kingpin in a burning car off the highway of 43. <laughs> <laughs> I fuck this man's up with a hit on that nigga. Yeah, come, nigga. Come come my way and see I'll put a, put a cap in your ass. Oh, fuck man. him. God, you know, <laughs> you know, nothing thing I happen to be. Well, if I tell Vince, it's like, you seen the cover of Muscle and Fitness? Vince is all jacked up. And I said, that nigga's on the juice. That nigga is on the juice, nigga. And then he's, he's suspending niggas. Oh, hey, yo, nobody's going to be bigger than Vince. Yeah. You find, you know, because you know, that nigga is ripped. Triple H yeah. is ripped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, shit. You know, feed me more. That nigga's jacked. Hook me up. Yeah, with John, the shit they're on. John Cena recovering in three months from an injury that takes six months. Yeah, okay. My yo, my favorite line, my favorite classic line is this: When they asked, you know, Steiner, "Hey Steiner, we need you to take a drug test." Sure, I'll do it. First Triple H does it. <laughs> he does it. I do it. <laughs> yeah. And he never bothers him again. Yeah, I remember that. He said you know. that. he said send the send the limo for me and have Triple H in it. We'll take the test together. And he never they never came. <laughs> yeah, something. Uh, CM Punk was saying the same thing. He said, uh, you know, they asked him to take a drug test, and he was offended because he's, of course, drug free. And he asked, he said, I'll take a piss test when Triple H does. And yeah, that kind of that kind of went to shit. So they, they went, yeah. It. yeah, I mean, dude, it's handpicked, man. It's handpicked. Yeah. It's who the, you know. It's you know, if you're the top star, if you're the top dog. You know, and again, I'm not knocking Triple H. God bless him. I'm not knocking, you know, whoever. It's just it is what it is, man. If I'm the top dog, nigga, I have to take a piss test. I am the man. <laughs> I am the heavyweight champion. I am the one to put asses in you. All right, fine. You suspend me. See what happens to the house. Yeah. See what happens to the house. You know, yeah, so of course they don't want to take a chance, you know. But if it's like, and I'm sorry to say, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge fan. But if it's Dolph Ziggler, who's supposed to be, I, in my opinion, supposed to get a, should get a big push, mm -hmm. bigger push than he is. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're suspended. But you're suspended. But they ain't going to suspend the big names, you know? Nah. You know? Nah. They're, they're, but, dude, they'll suspend black, more, you know, the black people. And that's another question. Why is it that every time they try to put, you know, like, they never put black and Hispanic people in a, in a regular gimmick? Why is it that every time the gimmick has to be, New Day, oh. Go Prince Jesus, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, nigga, please. <laughs> nigga, please. Yeah, you know, day, I mean, just, they're, yeah, I they're mean, not good. They're not good at all. The original, the original idea, and I thought it would have went over, is to be honest, I heard they were going to do just like what they were going to do with uh, like Nana and the embassy thing. Mm -hmm. that they were going to bring in Nana, and it was going to be this embassy group. Um, right. I don't know if that's true, if it, you know, they're going to bring in Prince Nana at the time or whatever, but, you know, that was the idea that, you know, because I know Nana was going over there trying out, and for whatever reason, nothing happened, but apparently they were going to do this, like, Nation of, you know, because everything's revamped. Everything, you know, the fucking, uh, you know, uh, the Shield. Who, who the Shield? Who really is the Shield? If you, if you could pick a group, who is it? Freebirds. No, nigga, the Baldies were here. <laughs> three dudes. <laughs> no, it's the truth. Three dudes. It's three dudes in black against authority. The same thing that the Baldies did. We were hired guns. We were, in, you know, the same thing, but they just have hair. They just revamp anything, you know? Yeah. New, day, new Day, I mean, fuck, I mean, Nation of Domination, you know, they just, all these things just come around in full circle, and they just, you know, look at, um, okay, look at Bray Wyatt. That's the same gimmick of Wayland Mercy for fucking, uh, yeah. for yeah. fucking David Sp Man Spivey. Yeah. Yep. Same gimmick, same gimmick and everything. They just did a fly at that time, and they just revamped it. Yep, absolutely. It's even, it's just, it's just, huh? even dressed the same. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, I'm just saying it's the same gimmick, man. And if you look at other gimmicks, you're gonna go, hey, yeah, wait a minute. If you, you know, it's like the seven, the eight stages of Kevin Bacon. You know, you're gonna go, okay, what's connected? You know, you know, yeah. it's like that Sesame Street, but what is different than the other? You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> right? You know, so that's how it is, man. I mean, they just revamp it, but they never take care of us, man. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, everybody who's heavyweight champion is white. I'm sorry to say, but, you know, but then anybody in sense of color is only, like, champion for two weeks. <laughs> you know? No. Oh, the new heavyweight champion, the King Ten Angel, chair shot. <laughs> oh, one, two, three. I was like, what the? 
I didn't even get to put the belt on. You know. Yeah, you're right, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I'm just saying, man. It is All what it is, man. You know. Absolutely, it is what it is. All the listeners, you can follow Angel on Twitter at ECW Boldy Angel. Go ahead and follow him. This guy probably, honestly, I mean, we we just started interviewing guests last week. A year from now, this is probably going to be my favorite interview. I'm not just saying that because you're on top ten. Uh, who, 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 who was the who was the who was the who was the guy before me? Uh, we had two people last week. We had uh, Matt Tremont from CZW and uh, Louis Ramos. Who? Matt Tremont. Matt. CZW. That sounds like Matt Stryker. And um, and who's nah, the other guy? guy? Uh, Louis Ramos. Louis Ramos. He was in uh, Jersey All Pro. Yeah, he was in Jersey All Pro, Ring of Honor, CZW. Yeah. He was a hardcore wrestler. Did some death matches in, in uh, Northeast. No, nah, fuck that death match shit, man. I ain't doing that shit anymore. You got to pay me some serious cash for that shit. Shit, I yeah. don't blame you, man. I don't fucking blame you. Yeah, Can't blame me at all. I've done it. I didn't pay my dues, man. I don't need to do, do that anymore. I mean, if you want me to do it, you're going to pay me. Yeah. You know, and I'm not talking a million dollars. Just you know, I gotta go. Yeah, it's worth it. You know. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's right. that's definitely understandable. Absolutely. Well, cool. you know, like I said, man, I, I know you guys. You're not busy. You guys are doing your show, and I really appreciate you guys having me on. I really wish you the best of luck with your future shows and stuff. Um, Thank you. And uh, you know, maybe you could do like a you know year anniversary. You know. You know. Definitely, man. Yeah. Definitely. We're, uh, you know, we'd love to have you back on again. Tell some more stories, man. This is definitely one of uh. Well, absolutely, man. Because this guy is jinxing me. Like something's gonna happen to me. Like Dutch Mantel is gonna come through my window <laughs> and buck me. So maybe <laughs> this could be the last interview of the Kingpin. So All this right, could well, be listen. one of those treasured moments. <laughs> well, listen. This is the Easter egg. The listen, hidden the Easter, Easter egg in this egg. fucking <laughs> conversation. <laughs> God damn! Listen, all the listeners, we're gonna we're gonna get Angel back on the show just to just to check on him, make sure Dutch Mantel didn't kill him. Yeah, we'll get him back. Well, absolutely, man. And maybe it'll be live sense. from the fucking infirmary. Hey, from the ICU <laughs> at the fucking St. Patrick's uh, Hospital, breathing out of his neck is the Kingpin Angel <laughs> with him with like the fucking cane. <laughs> yeah, he did it. There you go. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> we'll get the hot tag exclusive interview straight out of the hospital. Get the hot tag, bro. Half my face all burnt off from the acid that you threw in my face when I opened the door. <laughs> you know, you know. Oh, like, oh, you know, I look like the fucking, I look like the fucking Phantom of the Opera. I'll probably be singing like that shit too. Oh, dude, you know? that's funny. <laughs> God damn. Well, listen, man. Greatly appreciate you coming on, man. <laughs> it's definitely entertaining, and I had a great time interviewing you, man. And you know, thank you for all the things you've done in the ring, man. Like I said, I was. One of a one of big huge ECW fan being from Philly, so definitely appreciate everything you've done. Well, hey, but you just forgot one thing, though. One thing that's really important that it needs to be stamped on your show. Please go ahead, tell us. This Saturday, 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 it is the forty three. 43rd birthday of the Kingpin. I want to wish me a happy birthday. Oh well, goddamn! There you go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, man. Happy I, early birthday. I don't take checks. I take cash, gift cards, okay, candy, anything. You know, gym memberships. So you can please, I you know, respond to you know, like I said, ECW Baldy Angel on Twitter. You know, so find me on Facebook. I take every you know all gifts. There you Perfect. go. We're going to get him a WWE Network uh, pass. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, we got Tweet it. him at ECW Baldy Angel and buy him a subscription for a year. There you go. Make this happen, folks. Oh, if anybody, or you could get Dutch's head in a jar with fucking formaldehyde <laughs> like in the Silence of the Lambs and bring it to me so I can have it on my desk. <laughs> you know? Or that. I think that would be awesome. Oh, That'd be classic. There you go, man. Was, and that was also in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, um, in Zorro. They had his brother's head in the jar, drinking That's wine. Right. Zorro's a classic. Yes, Damn. sir. There you go. But again, bro, I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Uh, you know, uh, thank agree. you for having me on. And, uh, you know, yeah, you hit me up whenever, and I'll do it again. Yeah, absolutely, man. Anytime. Uh, if we can hold you for one more minute after we go on break, we're going to get a quick, uh, quick line from you. Yeah, we'll go. We're going to get out. Be right back, everybody. <laughs> 